The Federal Aviation Administration says 2015 will be a critical year in the journey towards full implementation of its next-gen air traffic management system in 2020. To help business aircraft operators better understand how the ambitious program will impact them, AIN and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University hosted a workshop. According to industry representatives, it's time to step up efforts to ensure that key technologies such as automatic dependent surveillance broadcast are implemented. You know, one of the key fundamental programs of NextGen, which is the deployment of domestic ADSB here in the United States. Uh, the program is now about at the halfway point. The FAA announced the requirements, uh, basically started the work uh, to get this thing into the system back in 2010. And as requested by the operator community, we have a 10-year transition to get there. 2015 is half time, and there's a lot of work ahead of us. So where we're at today is that we have close to 10,000 aircraft equipped, which is a good foundational starting point. Many of those aircraft were equipped in the past 12 months, so we're really seeing this acceleration of equipage. There are solutions from a number of different avionics vendors. On the lighter end, you have Avidyne, Freeflight, Bendix King, Honeywell, Garmin, and as you step on into larger aircraft, you have your ACSS, L3, Rockwell Collins, and Honeywell. So there are now products available, which a couple of years ago was not necessarily the case. So the big obstacle ahead of us now is equipping the fleet. We believe that for ADSB specifically, for general aviation, there's going to be somewhere between 100 and 160,000 aircraft that need to be equipped. That's about 20,000 aircraft a year at least that we're going to see over the next 20 years. Based on last year's activity, we can get there. But the message that I would send to the operator who owns an aircraft is, start getting smart on the technology now. It's there. You can probably find a solution for your aircraft, and now I want you to make an informed decision what makes sense for your aircraft, how it's currently configured, and what you want to do in the system after 2020. Do you have a current transponder that just needs a software upgrade? Is your transponder a vintage one that you may look for an opportunity to upgrade it? Or are you making a decision where, as part of your ADSB upgrade, which is mandated, are there other capabilities that you want to put into your aircraft? Weather, traffic, advanced PBM, maybe if you fly outside the United States, data communications capability. Take a moment, stop right now, talk to your avionics vendors, and get smart about what the options are out there. NextGen will impact all sectors of aviation, requiring all categories of operators to make sure they're ready for the new system. The technologies going forward are no longer where it's just one ofs, where you can operate independently from the government or the uh, from the ANSP, or the uh, the large carrier can operate independently from the smaller carrier. The technologies by themselves make everyone interdependent. So it is going to put uh, greater requirements and responsibilities on uh, the stakeholders and community to come together in order to realize NextGen. Business aircraft operators can clearly see the benefits NextGen will bring in terms of a more efficient use of the available airspace. I think it's going to be a better place to fly. You know, given our current uh, situational awareness with our traffic data that we have right now and where ADSB and the NextGen solutions with SWIM and some of the other things that are coming are going to put us, there's no doubt our airspace is going to need it. We're going to need to be able to pack more in. There's a lot of more demands coming. And for safety and security and knowledge and situational awareness, all these things are going to be increased when we're able to upgrade with these new technology. But some operators remain concerned about a lack of clarity as to how exactly they can comply with the next-gen requirements. I think we're all struggling to try to determine for our specific platform what is going to be required and how are we going to get there and more importantly, what is it going to cost? Most of us are aware of the 2020 mandate's coming. Many of us are asking the questions to our manufacturers, the OEMs, uh, and the avionics industry. You know, when are we going to have a solution? But for the Part 25 world, those of us flying the middle and larger scale corporate jets, we don't have an answer. And the answer is they're working on it, and they've been saying that for several years. So we're really working to find out when are we going to get that answer. And my concern is, is that we're running out of time. 2020 is coming. There's a lot of aircraft in the fleet that need to be upgraded, mine included. And I don't know the cost, and I don't know what's involved. So I'm concerned on a couple of fronts. One, I'm hearing some pretty significant costs, some six-figure costs, and, and sometimes more um, into the seven figures to uh, do these upgrades. And then number two, that there's a lot of hurdles in terms of certification that needs to be done um, with either STCs or service bulletins and things that aren't even really being um, completed yet. In any case, next-gen procedures will involve a significant change in mindset for pilots and air traffic controllers. When you start changing how I communicate with an ATC provider, uh, that's not just how I push a button, that's actually how I get my information to the person that's controlling me. And that's a, 
Those things I think are not thought too much in a training environment, but as an instructor, I think that's a big deal. There's, there's a lot more than just saying, hey, I'd like uh, Flight Level 250 to be text-based instead of voice-based. The way to think about that is, is very different than I think a lot of people have considered. The implementation of next-gen technology will involve further clarification in terms of certification requirements and a lot of work on the part of those installing the equipment. Operators will also have to carefully consider how the required upgrades might impact the value of their aircraft. The issue for operators, especially for some older, but not even that old aircraft, is that the equipment is actually now available but the certifications to install the equipment are still lagging. Now once those certifications are in place, these operators will be lined up at the doors of the maintenance shops to get the equipment installed. The capacity issue at the maintenance shops could be a problem for a lot of the smaller aircraft, but in the business jet market, I believe there's enough capacity to handle the majority of the customers in a fairly timely fashion to meet the 2020 mandate. The problem for older aircraft is that the operators are going to have to decide, is it worth upgrading my airplane for ADS-B or should I just sell it and buy a newer airplane that's already equipped or that has a lower cost way of meeting the mandate? What I think we'll see is that operators are going to face that decision and some of them will decide to equip in order to preserve the value of the aircraft because if they don't, they aren't going to sell it for very much money. There will be other aircraft that simply will probably be considered too old to continue flying and they'll end up getting scrapped, but that's part of the normal ebb and flow of the business aircraft marketplace.